Uh, I am Dr. Om Srivastav. Uh, I am a consultant in infectious diseases, immunology, and HIV. Uh, I practice uh, in South Mumbai at uh, Just Lok Hospital, Saifi Hospital, and Wokart Hospital. And I am also uh, unit head at uh, Kasturba Hospital for communicable diseases. Well, the burden is huge. The, the, if you look at the, the number of people who are now required to be admitted to a hospital for even the simplest of infections like, like a urinary tract infection or a chest infection, that, that burden is so much now that these infections that would normally have been treated as an outpatient uh, with oral antibiotics uh, for about five to seven days have now become uh, situations where patients will need to be hospitalized and be given intravenous antibiotics for uh, any, any duration varying from seven to ten days to three weeks time. And in spite of that, people will have complications or in some instances will unfortunately succumb. So the burden of, of infections that are either partially treated or not treated in the community requiring uh, patients to be hospitalized is only growing. It's not dwindling, it's not coming into a number which is controllable. Uh, with every passing year or even even less than that, it's only that number is only increasing with an alarming frequency. Now, one major part of that of that situation is that treatments are often left to be completed. They are not completed for the duration because most times when you are finding that you are you're feeling better, you will discontinue your antibiotics. Now what that does is, for the next cycle of infections, that antibiotic may or may not work, or that antibiotic may require a higher dosage or a combination and prolonged therapy for you know sometimes as long as three weeks' time. And so all of these factors contribute towards infections not being treated. You know, uh, there's also what is called an antibiogram. That means you look at the number of antibiotics that will work for a particular infection. And in most instances, now you will find that uh, the number of antibiotics working in a particular, particular infection are no more than three or four, and sometimes less than that. And we are now also dealing with situations where the, uh, you know, there are some bugs where no antibiotics are working. So that is an alarming situation as well. That situation also will be such that uh, if you've got no antibiotics working, <coughs> got no antibiotics working, then you are, you are going to be left with virtually no options for patients uh, uh, getting treated in, in hospital. So uh, these situations are ones that need to be addressed. There are several measures that are already in place, including things like having uh, uh, you know, restricted antibiotics in some hospitals. There are other measures that are being seriously contemplated and thought about uh, in terms of what can be done to improve not only sensitivity of, of ghastly bugs or bugs that can be life-threatening, but also to take uh, uh, a situation like this to try and see what can be done to reverse it in the very foreseeable future. So antibiotic resistance is a, is a colossal problem. It's a, it's a huge problem. Uh, in terms of a person who gets infected, in terms of uh, the burden of, on the healthcare, or private health insurance, or patients who pay from their own pocket. All of these situations are going to be such that they're only getting more and more demanding uh, and alarming, and not uh, the other way around, not getting under control. We see, the most likely strategy that will work in preventing of infections is uh, vaccinations, adult vaccinations. Of course, all of us go through vaccinations as uh, children, pediatrics. But as adults, what happens is that, you know, beyond a certain point of time, the vaccines that you're taking are not going to last you for the rest of your biological life, especially because your own immune system, that means that part of your, of your system that uh, fights infections, uh, once that immune system starts to weaken for a number of reasons, whether it is aging or it is the fact that the, the vaccine is is not as effective as it was 10 years or 15 years ago, or it is a combination of a number of factors. Once your immune system starts to weaken, it only makes sense 
to support that immune system, to give it the kind of support that is required for uh, keeping you from getting an infection. So, for instance, if you are somebody who gets three or four or five or more than those numbers of chest infections, now when you get a chest infection by uh, a virus like the influenza, the common flu virus, if you are going to be bed bound for you know seven, eight, ten days, that is the the total burden of that infection is the loss of manpower hours and the cost of getting yourself treated. If if you if you've got only the influenza virus, well that's fine. But if you've got more than one infection, then that becomes uh, treatment for that infection as well. And so if you are in that situation where you will benefit from a vaccine, a vaccine once every year for influenza is something that will minimize the burden of the illness to you in a big way. So it's not that you're not, not going to get the, vac the, the infection again, but the burden of the infection will have fallen by about two thirds and sometimes even, even more. Now, this is not only for influenza, this is also for pneumococcal vaccine, this is also for hepatitis vaccine, this is uh, for a number of vaccines in adults where you are making a strategy to take an injection that will prevent what commonly has been happening to you on a yearly basis or two or three times a year or even more than that and that the, the amount of disease burden falls substantially to give you the benefit of the vaccine. So, preventive strategies to, to prevent infections, adult vaccinations is, uh, I, I don't think it's just important, it is critical. It can be life saving but it is, it is critical in making you more productive as you get older. Now, it doesn't have to be uh, in somebody who is elderly, even people who are young, fit and healthy, depending upon their risk, a vaccine is recommended. But then for that, you have to tailor a vaccine regimen individually for each person. It cannot be a blanket recommendation for everybody. But individuals who will benefit from this kind of a regimen are, uh, are strongly recommended to take, uh, take vaccines so that one part of infectious diseases that you are most likely to be suffering from, you will find that the burden of these infections falls, falls substantially. And then of course there is the question of uh, ensuring your immunity, uh, which will also be boosted by taking a vaccine on, on a regular, you know, periodic interval.